Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Spada. Hi, Chetna. How are you? Good, super. All right, so we are here Hi, live. Hi, Smita. This is Deepa. Hi, Deepa. So lovely to see you. So we get see started. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much uh, for taking your time out on a Thursday for this really interesting conversation. Just a request because we are live on FB and we have a lot of people online. If you could put yourselves on mute and uh, we we'll get a lot of time for all of you to be asking questions. So we will open up the lines then and you can uh, ask questions. So welcome. Uh, I hand this over to Madhura first. Madhura, you want to get started? Yes. Yes, Mita. Thank you. So hello all. Welcome for today's session uh, by Eileen Kelpachar on the Posh Law and we are here as an Indian Lawyers Association in India with a presence in about 75 plus cities. We do uh, different events, initiatives and activities that give platform for lawyers and all legal professionals for networking, mentoring and getting guidance uh, or even for continuing their professional education. Uh, maybe by tonight or tomorrow morning, we'll send more details to you on email and we all welcome you to join us on this mission. Smita, I hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madhura, for a quick introduction about ILA. So uh, ILA and Kelpicha have been doing sessions together. The idea is come together and simplify the whole aspect of POSH. Uh, a little bit of introduction about Kelpicha. We started in 2013, exactly the year when we got this law, Prevention of Sexual Harassment, the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace, Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act 2013. Uh, Many a times when we look at the law and we see some aspects, it's just one paragraph given in. And we always wonder how to decipher more, how to learn more. So Kelpichar and ILA came together and we said that let's start simplifying things. So today's subject is very, very interesting. Um, it is about conciliation. So I'll, before I start about the subject, a little bit about myself. I have a total of 23 years of experience. I started as an HR person from last seven years. I have been running Kelp HR. I'm the CEO and co-founder. Uh, 2020, I was listed in the global diversity list as a consultant, DNI consultant. Uh, with me, I have this amazing panel members. So you can see them. Uh, let me start with Anusha first. Uh, so Anusha has been um, uh, associated with ICUL. Uh, as you know, an associate, okay? So she is in, based out of Chennai since uh, 2020, um, uh, as an associate, sorry, in, uh, in Chennai. Being part of the corporate team, her role involves drafting, researching, providing legal opinions, vetting of uh, various commercial contracts and conducting due diligences. Prior to joining the firm, she worked as a senior associate in an MNC where she headed various legal projects outsourced by Thomas Routers. She also has an experience in legal marketing, which is uh, where she began her career. She graduated in law from the School of Excellence in Law, Chennai. As a passionate orator and conversationalist, she has an avid uh, participant, participation in various debates, elocutions, presented her college in court competitions held in Delhi and Punjab. So that's about Anusha. Niharika Arora, we have here. She is the council member of Anti-Sexual Harassment Council in Delhi, in Vicky. She is Women's Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and has insight of law and practical aspects concerning it. She is an LLM graduate in international law with knowledge and experience in humanitarian, human rights, and corporate law. Currently a legal consultant with various organizations and external member. She has delivered several training programs in prevention of sexual harassment. She's dedicated her uh, uh, career to the cause. So let's hear from her today. 
And finally, we have the gentleman on the group uh, in the panel member, that is Deepak Kumar. He is the partner at Khetan and Co. Mumbai and works with employment, labor and benefits practice of the firm. Uh, recently recognized and listed as Asian uh, legal uh, business India, India Rising Stars on a range of contentious and non-contentious employment and labor matters concerning workforce and benefits, restructuring, managing industrial relations, strategizing India entry and exits, among others. A regular contributor on regulatory and policy developments and trends in employment law space. Deepak has taken up many speaking opportunities to discuss a range of employment and labor aspects at sessions organized by leading industry bodies and clients. So this is the panel, a huge, solid, super solid panel. So welcome on board, all of you. It is awesome to be able to speak to you. Uh, before that, let me set the context. As I said in the beginning, conciliation. Uh, if you open English dictionary, this is what conciliation has to offer. It's an action of mediating between two disputing par parties or people. Okay, uh, that, that's it. So there are two parties. We are mediating between them. And what does the law say? Law says this one paragraph about conciliation. I've highlighted few aspects of it, that it is at the request of the grieved woman. Uh, no monetary settlement is provided there. Uh, once we conciliate the matter, the same is forwarded to the employer to take action as specified that comes out of the recommendation of IC. Uh, provide we have to ensure we have to provide copies of settlement to both the parties. Uh, no further inquiry shall, shall be conducted by internal committee once the conciliation is done. So that's about conciliation. And now uh, we call Deepak, uh, uh, Neharika and Anusha. Just if you could get started and tell us a few lines about what do you think about the subject? Uh, what do you any highlights about the subjects that subject that you would want to share here? Deepak, you could get started. Thank you, thank you, Smita, and uh, very uh, good, very, very warm and good evening to everyone. Uh, taken out time to uh, hear us speak on this issue. Uh, uh, a very interesting subject, and the context has been very well put up by Smita. Uh, conciliation itself and the posh. Uh, uh, law and prevention of sexual harassment uh, as a matter is uh, taking up and getting a lot of traction in our country now. A uh, lot of employers are warming up uh, to it. Also, I understand there are a lot of hesitations, a lot of questions, not just amongst uh, uh, the target audience uh, uh, in res uh, for protection of whom uh, this law has been framed, but also in respect of employers also who have to manage and organize and ensure that uh, appropriate committees are formed, uh, safe uh, and secure workplace is ensured uh, for all their employees. And uh, also a lot of employees who have to be part of the internal committee of the organization themselves and ensure that they act in a free and fair manner uh, while not just protecting the interests of the complainant and ensuring uh, due justice is delivered but also to the fact that uh, the respondents are also not unjustly prejudiced or victimized at the workplace. And, uh, it's, and to, to, to be very honest, it's, it's not an easy job to be done. It's, it's something very difficult. And uh, uh, the law itself, uh, if you read the, uh, the act, which we very, uh, which very familiarly we call and refer to as the Porsche Act, uh, it requires and refers, uh, provides broad outlines for how the committee members need to, need to conduct the inquiry process while they have been given wide powers in terms of conducting the inquiry and making a recommendation. There are, there are a lot of aspects which are left out open and uh, the committee members are not judicial or judicially trained personnel, they are regular employees uh, like anyone else. So a lot of guidance and uh, is 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 necessitated in that, and it's not something that you encounter on a daily basis. These are uh, exceptional matters where they come in, 
and this provision on conciliation is one such aspect which sometimes becomes very uh, a sticky subject as to how uh, do you deal with it and not just for complainants but also for committee members and for the management also that how best do we introduce this conciliation uh, to the complainant at what stage should it be introduced how do you communicate about the terms of conciliation such that it uh, it come it does doesn't come out as a uh, as as an aspect that somebody is trying to scuttle the proceedings or uh, trying to dissuade the complainant into going for a more uh, a compromise route and uh, not moving forward with the complaint, but also while ensuring that in case if there is a possibility where the complainant and respondent can sit across the table and uh, any misunderstandings or issues can be sorted out upon mutual discussion, is this something that can be done? So the intent of the law is very clear, but Unfortunately, we have not seen too much of uh, judicial precedence or jurisprudence developed on the subject as to how to come up with it. And there are a lot of questions amongst everybody as to how this should be introduced, how this should be perceived, at what stage should it be perceived, how long can these go on. And there, are, there, there is a lot of uh, what we call it as a gray area, a lot of questions which should evolve around this process. Not everybody is in favor of it. Uh, a lot of people uh, tend to disagree with the part that if there is an act and sexual harassment is a very serious uh, offense and very serious allegation and there should not be any ambiguity of conciliation, inquiry should process and uh, whatever the committee then comes to a conclusion that uh, should be implemented by the management. So that the process of conciliation itself can have an effect in terms of delaying the process. That's the other side of the story. So uh, not adding much to uh, or giving much traction to it, uh, but it has a lot of facets, uh, but it does have on the side, it does have uh, uh, a possibility of resolving a lot of complaints, which can be uh, resolved by mutual discussions at an early stage. But yes, we have to be very careful in how this, has, uh, this is dealt with. Absolutely, Deepak. It is sticky and uh, we'll have to be very sensitive. It's about mediating between two parties and how delicately it, it is managed is important. So I'll go to Anusha. Anusha, any input from you? I hope I have done justice to your uh, introduction. If you want to say anything, a minute or two. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful introduction. So kudos to the Porsche law in itself. It's a beautiful initiative. The naive optimism surrounding the advantages of the Porsche Act needs to be balanced through a deeper understanding of the disadvantages hidden within the Act in its current form. So uh, conciliation in Porsche law, uh, it can be a boon as well as a bane depending on a case-to-case -case basis. Uh, for example, the offenses need to be differentiated into a minor indictable offenses and a major indictable offenses. The impact it has on the victim, the aggrieved party, the, the depth of the impact and, and how much the party is aware of the benefit he or she will receive from the inquiry or the conciliation depends largely upon a lot of educating going through the, uh, the person, the complainant. So uh, taking, if you are taking conciliation, it, it majorly depends on a case to case case based and there's no fast rule to say it hard or fast rule to say that conciliation work in this case and will not work in this case so and uh, uh, to start with i would like to say that with no monetary benefit a bane in conciliation more often than not the icic would tend to choose inquiry over conciliation so that's my uh, to start with i would like to say that all right. Thank you so much, Anusha. Uh, Neharika, uh, I hope uh, uh, I have done justice to your introduction and any two-liners from you before we get started. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I feel conciliation has been explained uh, very beautifully by uh, my fellow panelists. Uh, the only aspect that I would like to add in what has already been said is the reason that why was conciliation made a part of this act. Uh, nobody obviously knows the intent and reason, but there can always be this justification given that conciliation in its concept is basically a voluntary and a flexible way of resolving disputes. 
it's it's independent it's uh, it's confidential it's and it's basically it gives the power to the complainant to decide what what essentially she wants because uh, this act in its most basic essence is basically is saying that sexual harassment is subjective so it enables the complainant to let us know what she finds is offensive to her like because impact is greater than intent under this act and hence in the same way it extends to the fact that the complainant will decide whether she wants a mere apology or an inquiry whether she wants to give the power to settle this complaint to the ic or she wants to take it herself so maybe this aspect also needs to be considered while we discuss whether uh, conciliation is good or bad under this act as it's given because the psyche behind why we have it is also important because it it helps colleagues talk freely about what they found offensive because it's often often there is there are things which are misinterpreted the miscommunicated or as we say understood differently it's yeah. not even miscommunication anymore because it's understood differently by different people hence conciliation is a positive way of resolving disputes provided it's handled carefully provided there have been trainings in the organization before disputes have arise which are making it clear which the point is going through that conciliation is not settlement conciliation is dispute resolving it's not settlement we are resolving a dispute between two colleagues by themselves we are enabling them to talk amongst themselves awesome that's that's a really nice and you reminded me a point actually we are discussing one particular case or rather helping to be uh, to individuals as you rightly said and uh, facilitating a discussion and what we realized is there are two generation involved in it and what is okay for my generation may not be okay for your generation niharika because we ourselves belong to different generation right so for me what is okay is just not coming okay to you or for you what is okay is not just coming exactly. so we are disputing over it and then it becomes a harassment uh, exactly case, right? because the intent is to understand different backgrounds different cultures where you're coming from what you are interpret it's like in the same family my brother and me we don't think alike what i consider to be anti feminist or anti women he doesn't because i have to make him think about my point of view so that's why people think differently and i feel the intent of the act needs to be considered before we interpret any of the provisions absolutely so i'm coming to my first question and as we are discussing i'll i'll stay with you nihari can no. tell me what do you think about it how often do you see a uh, complaint in making a request of conciliation yes sir Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. All that was done. What? What? What was? Yes, I yes. have to personally. Ah, uh, personally, ah, uh, in the few cases that I've seen, they first ninety percent of my cases, in fact, they first wanted to do a conciliation. uh i would like to point out here that there were no major offenses i would say like major involving basically no physical uh, sexual harassment cases there were uh, cases where there was staring involved there were cases when there were uh, sexual innuendos uh, being involved in uh, daily con- conversations but yes conciliation was i have had a very positive uh, experience with conciliation because the girls who have come forward uh the women who have come forward they've always wanted to first address the point that the other person doesn't even know that they are doing wrong they should first acknowledge that it's not right to just say whatever they please it's not right to disregard the other person's feelings to disregard disregard what other person considers their boundary like not everybody is Uh, okay to discuss what is going on in game of thrones in a workplace scenario so it is something that we'll have to communicate we'll have to make people understand because as you rightly said that there are so many generations working together these days that you uh, we it's i feel like it should have been a prerequisite this anti sexual harassment training should have been a prerequisite from the time immemorial because you know there are so many people from so many backgrounds you have to make them understand what is right and what is wrong at every you know like in workplace scenarios so yes conciliation has been 
very positively received at my end yeah awesome uh, deepak do you think the same with the organizations that you have been dealing how often do you see a uh, complainant making a request for conciliation uh, you're on mute deepak that's it so uh, thank you thank you smita and a very interesting perspective uh, from neharika on the practical side of the things being a member on a lot of uh, internal committees for organizations uh, from a lawyer's perspective and advising management uh, particularly uh, we typically get a lot of questions uh, about how the inquiry process has to be drawn out unfortunately it so happens that most of our requests come when there is an actually a complaint has been lodged and the management find itself at sea answering a lot of questions on formation of the committee tackling of the uh, responses we, uh, uh, a few of the cases there are uh, genuinely uh, genuine concerns about how and uh, where the conciliation should be offered uh, as a as an option to the complainant so uh, we have seen a lot of hesitance at some uh, at a lot of organizations uh, who have not been proactive with trainings and uh, helping out with debates on how conciliations and inquiries should be done up how uh, the employees need to be trained about what is an acceptable behavior at workplace and as neharika pointed uh, that if we have more of such internal trainings about acceptable behavior what are the rights and privileges of women uh, under the sexual harassment act Uh, the the members should be made aware of what is acceptable and not acceptable uh, particularly in terms of varying cultural backgrounds that we have uh, the difference in generations the age gap that you have um, the difference in uh, designation of various people that you have and of course no two workplaces are same not even two departments in a workplace are same where you're looking at a new age organization in a metropolis like mumbai will be completely different from a tier 2 tier 3 city Uh, or a tr tr traditional workplace at a, a smaller town so things will be very different though uh, important aspect here is that uh, people need to be uh, made aware of uh, the requirements of the sac the training should be there and so that they don't find uh, themselves at sea in terms of uh, talking up and about the issue and uh, the complainant demanding that as neharika pointed out that yes Uh, the respondent should be made aware that there was something which was uh, unacceptable uh, for uh, on the part of the women and that the respondent should be made aware that something what they did was uh, not not something which was acceptable to the complainant so that that training and that aspect needs to be uh, that will come that uh, that will come only with training and yes when the actual matter comes at hand a lot of uh, employers who are not prepared and a lot of committee members who are not prepared they do, they are at sea and little bit apprehensive about how to introduce uh, conciliation as a uh, option to the complainant all right awesome so now i have a question for anusha that have you seen uh, challenges uh, uh, in using conciliation as an alternative uh, alternative inquiry uh, do you come across any specific challenges anusha did did i lose her i can't see her uh neharika you would want to pick up that question of deepak well the only thing that i've come across as uh, as deepak sir said that when we talk about conciliation Uh, the first word that strikes in anybody's head is like, "Are we are we supposed to settle?" This this word settlement has been like as a like a snap thing for conciliation. So the only challenge that I faced was to make them understand that conciliation is not settlement. Conciliation is basically uh, both parties sitting together and having a dialogue about the dispute that arose, the problem that arose. Uh, so this is the only challenge i face uh, for conciliation after that once we've crossed this path once we've had a, an open dialogue on what it actually means and what are the repercussions what are the rights post conciliation if if there is a conciliation settlement drafted and if uh, the respondent adheres to it then the complainant is satisfied if the respondent doesn't adhere to it what are the rights of the complainant post that 
once this dialogue has been done i feel that it it is taken in a positive stride but uh, maybe deepak sir will be able to tell us more about it deepak what do you think do you do you think any challenges come up uh, uh, other than uh, when people use conciliation other than the full fledged inquiry no there definitely uh, and, and a lot of times it happens that when you don't have uh, as pointed out when you don't have sufficient training and uh, education about these matters the first time when you offer some uh, cons- option of conciliation to the complainant uh, is it that am i required to are you telling me that oh, do i need to settle or is it something uh, i can get out of it that what exactly do i get out of a conciliation what exactly are the contours so it's very important that as an ic member you are clear in terms of uh, when you offer an option of complainant uh, option of conciliation to the complainant you also need to clarify that what does uh, conciliation entail uh, what can come out of it uh, of course there's no option of monetary settlement that is uh, that should be clarified up front but yes it is an opportunity for the complainant to uh, sit across the table with the respondent and uh, face up and ask that okay this was something which was there which was not acceptable and this is something i have a problem with and then see that uh, what does the complainant has to uh, uh, respond uh, what does the respondent has to say to that and does he accept uh, that it was something which was inappropriate on his her part and uh, then we can come to it and essentially as niharika pointed out it's more to see to clear the misunderstanding or the air between two people but it's mostly in the case where the complainant feels that there could be a possibility of misunderstanding or something that needs to be clarified but a lot of cases uh, especially in the new age organization you uh, you find that complainants are not averse uh, to conciliation aspect front up front because they feel that respondent had consciously acted in a manner that was offensive or uh, or deliberately passed any sexually colored remarks or or any actions which uh, they are alleging and they said that it was a deliberate action it should be investigated and punished her unfortunately or fortunately what we see is in a uh, society as a matter of fact uh, the way uh, sex, the act of sexual harassment has also come up and i don't will not go into the historical uh, aspects of why this law had come into force and how the inequalities in the society are drawn up but the connotations are that it is something uh is something not looked up very favorably and the intent and the expectation here is that there is an inquiry and then there is a punishment involved of course so far it's not criminalized yet but uh it's not the perception is nothing short of it yes so absolutely so uh, uh anusha is back anusha i have a question for you okay uh, uh i think we missed uh, you earlier see uh, uh deepak and niharika were talking about this and this comes up right if uh, i i think deepak mentioned that you know the whole behavior is so uh, is unwarranted for have you ever experienced a scenario where a person is uh, uh, you know sexually harassed and the woman comes up to the ic and says that she wants to Uh, make a sexual harassment complaint but she doesn't want any severe treatment to be uh, or any severe penalty to be given uh, to to the respondent so have you ever come across something like this and uh, i want to conciliate this matter or i want to mediate this matter but if if you look at it the offense was very very severe and there are proofs for it so have you ever come across any such situation and as what would your recommendation be for such a scenario i haven't come across like impliedly hearing those incidents i've come across in such a way so what plays a huge role here is how the girl reacts consent plays a huge role how she takes it who is a go to person often we are we are looking at corporate women deep down there there are people in uh, uh, urban and rural areas who are who are not so strong how do they perceive this and uh, for it it's it's common for any person to putting me in that girl's shoes i i totally understand like her it's it's her, it's her reputation which is hidden behind for for more reasons than one she might there there can be a uh for national commission of women 
they in their annual report uh, 2018 to 19 stated that they want the cons they recommended that they want conciliation removed from posh law because even uh, there's no minor offenses in sex in sexual offenses they they term it like that so they want it removed so that's the other party which which uh, which want uh, which want the uh, which want it otherwise they want to, to use conciliation for their own benefit so considering both the sides uh, on a case to case basis one has to ascertain go deep into the into the problem and then analyze and take a call uh, blindly one cannot say that uh, uh, it's a grievous offense but i want the solution because here complainant plays a huge role it's it's the burden of uh, proof lies on the complaint so uh, i think that should also be heard that part of the complainant also should be heard and each case should be taken from a unique perspective and uh, putting a common rule for all the cases will uh, will 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 uh, defeat the purpose of the act yeah, absolutely. I agree with you, Anusha. And I have a next question that what could be the advantage of conciliation, particularly to complainant, if there is any advantage uh, that conciliation as a part of the law must have thought through what was the logic of bringing it. And Anusha just said that there is a discussion about removing that part. So is there getting it in? Is it beneficial to the to any of the parties specifically for a complainant. Do, uh, so uh, Deepak, if you could attempt to respond to that question. So, uh, and I, I was waiting for Anisha to point it out, yes. And there, there are sections who are in favor of conciliation. There are sections of course who are not in favor of conciliation as a matter. And we need to see that uh, initially, uh, what was the intent why uh, conciliation was inserted as such and offered it's it's just a matter of all and also from the framework of how our system in terms of adjudicating processes that we always uh, do tend to look for an alternative resolution mechanism which is there so conciliation as an approach itself is provided but we have to be very carefully see how the section is worded because it's the way if you start reading it's not something which talks about, say, that it has to be necessarily offered uh, to a complainant. It just says that the internal committee may, if the complainant requests, take steps to settle the matter between the complainant and the respondent. So uh, there, th there's a lot of uh, uh, words which are uh, kind of used in, in the section itself. It says that the internal committee may take steps if the complainant offers to settle the matter between respondent and the between the complainant and the respondent, so that that is the operative part that we need to very carefully uh, take care of, and it's also uh, on part of IC that whether they feel that they need to take steps and uh, uh, to ensure that there is a settlement between the parties. But as a as a matter, why conciliation probably was introduced and uh, uh, referred into uh, the. Uh, Posh Act was also from the perspective that there is an alternative channel and if the complainant feels that uh, there is something that she expects from the respondent uh, and she can demand that this is something that has to be uh, accepted by the respondent and if the respondent accepts, there is a settlement that can be arrived at between the parties and we don't need to go through a formal inquiry channel. Uh, and I know it sounds, uh, and NHRC's views are... Uh, I concur to it, and they are relevant in, in certain workplaces and uh, circumstances where women might not be uh, uh, too empowered to open up and speak about uh, their rights and actions. So, uh, in the, those cases, and that is why it, the emphasis has been that it has to be initiated at the request of the complainant. And I see then that's the reason why I see also it's not a mandatory or the words are used that I see may take steps. It is also that to ensure that there is no undue pressure on the complainant to go through this conciliatory route and allow an easy way out for the respondent out of the allegation. And therefore it has to be uh, very, uh, what do you say, very carefully navigated in uh, by the IC also, that it's not an every request for uh, conciliation that may be accepted by the IC. If they feel that a prime offense, there is no 
uh, need for or their uh, settlement is something that may not uh, be very fruitful in such a matter and inquiry is a must then uh, then they should and ideally proceed with the inquiry process as such but yes the it's important factor is that the request for conciliation needs to come from the complaint and to its criteria so uh, uh, niharika you heard what deepak is saying right that conciliation has to come from uh, the Uh, the complainant now uh, the real practical world that we are in corporate world uh, we do not read policies we do not know that there is something called conciliation there right so as an a uh, woman uh, i wouldn't have even known that there is something called as conciliation and i have a right of it so does it become then ic's uh, role to explain to them or a uh, point out to them or maybe nudge to them uh, i'm using too many words nudge point out explain so what is that you you think you know you know becomes the ic's role to do um as uh, deepak sir pointed out that the law states that the ic may right uh, the word may is used so obviously it's not a prerequisite to inquiry but then at the same time it is one of the courses that has been made available under the act and the complainant has been given the right to choose i would again like to reiterate the aim of the law is not to punish it is to enable a sex and like sexual harassment free work environment right so the complainant needs to be informed of the choice also i was going through uh, the comments in the chat and they have been saying the word offered is wrong yes it is not offered as a prerequisite it is offered it is informed as a choice of uh, going through the complainant has the choice of going through conciliation or inquiry through ic when conciliation is opted the ic is only a facilitator it is not a counsel to be involved and con- like conciliate the matter for you so all of this information does need to go through to the complainant because it's complainant's choice as rightly pointed out by deepak sir and one can make a choice when one is informed of the choices so yes i feel like it since it's given under the act if if it if it's scraped off obviously it is scraped off but since it's given under the act it is the choice of the complainant to either go for conciliation or inquiry nobody has to make that choice for her so as a woman i would want to know what are my rights it is my right to know it yeah, absolutely uh, i think we discussed this but i still want to ask this question to anusha that if the allegations are really severe and the woman is still um, uh, you know uh, uh, gunning for conciliation like it is a severe act it should go to a police station or it should uh, ic should take immediate immediate uh, step because having that perpetrator in the system maybe for that woman no more could be dangerous but could be be dangerous to other women employees so can i see still say okay you want conciliation we will we would okay go ahead and give conciliation or i see has a right to say you know we heard you but i don't think a conciliation is an option and a strong action needs to be taken what do you think about this Okay. the beauty of conciliation in itself that if it protects you from the uh, to withdraw from conciliation any time without prejudice to their legal position in to see at any stage of the proceeding you can still opt out if the conciliation doesn't work and and it also obviates the party's freedom seeking recourse to the court court system as well so as a first step if conciliation doesn't work then you can go proceed to the inquiry as well so conciliation still acts as a filter it uh, to see from a larger perspective it is a boon to the complainant and uh, like stated earlier uh, more than i see educating people about it the employer also has a role to play the employer who is uh, uh, he he holds a, he or she holds an upper hand in uh, in in bringing the ic together in educating every every person in and out about the policies about the stringent uh, measures about conciliation the employer also has an upper hand to play in this so all right awesome that 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 is great that clarifies that bit really well my next question is uh, to deepak deepak what do you think if the respondent does not agree to the uh conciliation options or 
the implications of conciliation. Uh, can IC do anything about it? Can we intervene? Can we do anything about it? No, so definitely, uh, it, while again, the section and the Posh Act is very uh, scuttly and very, uh, uh, is not elaborated on what you can take, but the thing is that IC may take steps to ensure settlement through conciliation. So it's uh, kind of left open-ended for IC to ensure and take certain steps to ensure that the matter can be settled through conciliation if the complainant uh, chooses to do so. So to that extent, limited extent, uh, I, what I, I would still perceive that IC can take certain proactive steps and uh, to ensure that the conciliation goes on to it because you'll need, you need to understand that what's the intent behind conciliation. Conciliation is the aspect where the complainant has demanded something uh, that, okay, uh, uh, the complainant has certain rights and demands that okay the respondent should eat, uh, first accept what what has happened or she may have certain other demand expectations uh, from the respondent so it is it is important that both parties understand what is expected from each other and uh, and that respondent acknowledges that there was something which was uh, not appropriate on that part and this is what is the expectation of the complainant out of uh, this inquiry of, out of this conciliation process, and uh, if if doesn't agree, then the matter needs to proceed through a formal inquiry channel. So there is that also uh, the other aspect about uh, are we putting and uh, putting in a lot of time to go through this conciliation process and in turn delaying the inquiry for the longer duration. So yes, uh, to answer that question, IC can take steps to ensure that the respondent comes to the terms uh, and agree accepts that what is uh, uh, what the what is demanded by the complainant but yes we need to be a little careful that doesn't delay the process there is an extended question to that uh, deepak of what you said so is there a specified timelines to complete conciliation because that i don't think is mentioned in the law and what what do you suggest so uh, again, uh, since there are no timelines which are mentioned, what will suggest that we still don't go beyond the entire the timeline which is specified for the inquiry process. But I would still, uh, as a, a counsel to the company, uh, would still recommend uh, that IC to uh, actively take up conciliation between the parties. And of course, it should not be just because we are in an informal process of discussion uh, that it can take its own sweet time. We need to be aware of the fact that there is a serious uh, issue that is here and it does just doesn't unnecessarily delay the process. And if neither of the parties are ready to budge, it could be on both sides, the complainant and respondents. If, they, if the meeting of mind and meeting of expectation is not there, then we need to uh, move to the, cons uh, to the formal inquiry process. Because again, uh, it is on the IC to take steps to ensure that the settlement through conciliation. So if IC feels that it is something which is unlikely or which is not uh, going in the expected route, then yes, uh, we need to uh, opt and inform the parties that it's better to, uh, and in the interest of uh, justice, that uh, we proceed to a formal inquiry route sooner than later. So that 90 days and less than 90 days, because it could happen with conciliation or it could Pillow. Definitely. So it should, should not see that we are essentially expanding it 90 plus 90 days. Yes. And just because conciliation is there and mentioned that doesn't give uh, time to the respondent to uh, delay the inquiry process to that Got much it. more time. Got it. So Niharika, any specific outcomes that conciliation has to be uh, given um, given out as uh, outcome of the conciliation? Is there any special outcome that you think is listed in the law or anything that you have seen happening while you were dealing as an external member? Uh, well, the law is uh, very vague about what the outcomes of conciliation can be. Uh, but there's one thing which is clearly stated is no monetary settlement can be given as, uh, as a recommendation or a conciliation settlement can't be monetary. Uh, the other thing is that uh, you can't basically seek termination or suspension of your uh, of the respondent under conciliation because uh, 
the whole concept of consignation is an amicable dispute resolution i would again use this word uh, and termination and the suspension is something that you're basically punishing the person you're basically holding him responsible for something which cannot be done before it is proved and since inquiry is the way to do it inquiry is the way where evidences are weighed there is a recommendation made by the ic which basically represents which is a a civil court in its power so obviously we can't go for transfers or suspensions or terminations as such settlement agreement sorry as a conciliation agreement but uh, yes apologies and uh, other ways of making the work environment suitable for both of them to work harmon uh, harmoniously is is what i would aim for awesome so uh, anusha this is something that we were discussing and i come to you uh, is ic responsible to rehabilitate both the parties once the conciliation is completed of course yes so uh, conclusion depends upon two things whether the complainant has has given the complaint with the malicious intent then we have to take then there again it will it will not be concluded that will again be a fresh start of allegation why did she do it do it and then there's this other thing which which we which we are which we are familiar with when the Uh, when the accused is is proven guilty so what a uh, uh, common practice is a written uh, depending upon the severity of the offences a written apology a letter of warning a reprimand or censure uh, immediate transfer or suspension withholding but beyond this the, i think there there's a larger perspective all these should pay way for a for a non existent of sexual harassment workplace so some kind of awareness or some kind of uh, uh, something should should happen out of the line like 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 displaying it it in the notice board by keeping the names of the parties anonymous something a new way of uh, solution to the uh, post the uh, conclusion to stop these offenses should come into play right anything i uh, a little more uh, what happens to the complainant and respondent uh, while this what you just spoke about is to create an amicable work environment but you know they uh, the matter is conciliated they are going back maybe to same jobs or different jobs okay uh, is there anything that ic should do to watch their uh, mental health whether they are facing because a, there are two people sat across the table sorted but what happens to them a month later are they so is that an ic's responsibility or we are done and dusted once the conciliation is done uh i know it comes from an hr person human resource person uh, i i uh, want to ensure that we get back to normal so that's why i am extending this question a little more do, do you all in your practice in your this have experience have you experienced this yeah uh, so although the act doesn't speak about it what happens aftermath of the incident uh, but ic can go a little way beyond have a refreshed session again talk to the person again how is it uh, monitor micromanage the accused uh, or proven guilty uh, all those steps can be taken but is it taken is a question mark and it and it differs from an institution to an institution they should do it if i was a panel member of an icc i would do it all right thank you so much now i am uh, going to few set of case studies uh, so we had requested uh, the participants to send in few questions beforehand so we could include that so uh, one gentleman has sent us a case study and i'm going to read out that case study for the panel members to give a response to it and we could debate this out uh, debate this out so uh, the case study goes like this an employee who's in an engineering graduate with about 3 years of work experience in an it organization has committed suicide 4 months back that is january 2021 looks like a real case apparently due to frustration of several marriage proposals resulted in rejection and family conflicts on her marriage proposals this is what was revealed from her friends and colleagues the demised employee's sister has now represented that her demised sister had relationship with her male colleague 
who was married and has two children and has been harassing her sister in past which they have come to know now only after scrutinizing her mobile messages dated in may 2021 messages data in sorry not dated data messages data in 2021 uh, they claim that she had committed suicide because of that and desired action by the management surface level information received are that, that the demised employee and her male alleged colleague were very good friends had cordial relationship between them helpful and supportive to each other at work and nothing beyond there is no history of sexual harassment complaint made either by the demised employee or by any other on that alleged male employee how this case is to be conciliated or dealt with first of all at the premise or face of it i don't think it is a conciliation case uh, but i'll let the panel members uh, uh pick uh, deepak you want to go for it sure smita so uh, you rightly mentioned i think uh, in this unfortunate case uh, conciliation has to be uh, raised by the complainant while the family can uh, uh, make a complaint before the ic on behalf of the complainant who is uh, no more there but conciliation i don't believe will offer much to the complainant's family in this case of the deceased complainant i must say in case if they do have a genuine belief or uh, or or certain messages as i may say to prove that there were any mitigating circumstances that believe it, it would be better from the family's perspective they approach the law enforcement agencies in this regard uh, conciliation is unlikely to uh, provide much from the deceased complainant's perspective in this case right uh, neharika you want to add anything here uh, i agree with deepak sir uh, taking in consideration the facts uh, first if if the person genuinely wants an advice first can there be a complaint filed yes there can be a complaint filed by the legal heir of the complainant but rightly said the conciliation is between the complainant and the respondent and since the complainant uh, is not there it is a very grave case to prove so the evidence needs to be weighed in there should be an inquiry according to uh, my knowledge and suggestion that uh, the case should be dealt in by the inquiry of the ic committee to weigh the evidence and come to a conclusion because it is it is a very unfortunate case yeah anusha you want to say anything yeah i would like to second what deepak sir said uh so uh it, it he, he or she needs to be heard but there again this is a case uh which is a case which which is quite sensitive so a deeper understanding of more factual evidence we will be able to assess it all right uh do, do you think uh, there could be uh, uh, there has to go it has to go to police and ic can deal with it simultaneously or it should be first dealt with I, by ic and then it could go to law enforcement what do you all think i would say it rather the police get involved because uh, it is it is a uh, uh, it is i think it's beyond the uh, the scope of icc instead of battling between both the sectors the uh, uh, the police sector and the icc one person can handle it so it's better for the police to take over this case that would be my personal suggestion okay so anusha i stay with you because there is another question which came to us beforehand uh, this is from suchitra she says that during first joint session of inquiry she realizes after listening to the accused oh uh, okay uh, during the first joint session of inquiry she realizes after listening to the accused giving explanation to the sms responses she gave she could like she would like to take back her case can conciliation be suggested at this stage all right uh, let yeah. so, so what I'm saying is after the inquiry after the joint session of the inquiry the inquiry has started after that she wants to now go for conciliation 
uh depends upon the both the parties have a say but being the agreed party she has a higher say so i think uh, if it's not uh, uh, as ic uh, icc is flexible uh, considering the conciliation is also a good choice they can still go back and take that again depends upon how far they've uh, uh, invested uh, their time and everything if you think conciliation is, is will give a better solution to the Uh, to the issue they can still choose uh, uh, conciliation halfway through is what i would suggest i think deepak you had a different opinion about it you would want to share that right so uh, my only reservation in that case is that uh, because of wordings of the sec- of the section itself they start that before initiation of an inquiry so uh, there was a there is probably a re- Reason, of course, I don't have my jurisprudence to support uh, uh, my argument or thought process here, but I would want to leave that in case if during mid inquiry process there is a demand for conciliation. More often than not, there may be some uh, outside reasons why a complainant may want to go through a conciliation route and not let the inquiry proceed further. From an IC perspective, would see that of course. Uh, uh conciliation is something which will if a settlement is reached it will have a tendency of that inquiry not to proceed further so uh ic members is a kind of powers of civil court and all of that they need to be a little extra careful and seeing that why exactly is a request for conciliation coming on now when the inquiry is probably halfway through so i would uh, my advice here would be that uh, not to go through unless of course uh, there is something uh, very severe about it or the reasons why the conciliation request is coming up now and not to abandon the inquiry once it has started niharika do you do you whom do you support we have two opinions here i i actually stand in the middle so uh, i would really like the panelists to weigh in after what i've said uh, i agree with both of them but then i will again come to the point of the objective of the act again and again i'm saying this see the thing is that once uh, the inquiry is uh, on a roll and the complainant chooses to uh, conciliate if there is uh, if the law says that conciliation can be informed as an option uh, before the inquiry starts it also does not say that conciliation cannot be done when the inquiry has started there is no prohibition of conciliation uh, in between the inquiry so uh, since law is not black and white so there is always the scope to go back to conciliation uh, also uh, as an ic member we, uh, ic committee we have the power to ask and understand why the complainant in the middle of the inquiry wants to go for conciliation and can she go for conciliation yes but will the matter be conciliated also depends on the respondent like for instance if uh, the complainant is uh, wanting conciliation because it is a malicious complaint and she knows that it will be proved then the respondent will would not want to conciliate so the complainant will not have a choice but to either take back her case or go through the inquiry right but so why conciliation is demanded like in between the inquiry is also important and conciliation can also always be asked for and or opted but it does not necessarily mean that the matter will be conciliated because both parties need to agree on something absolutely right absolutely. so i kind of stand in the between Maybe. and i i stand with you okay <laughs> <laughs> i i absolutely feel that uh, uh, you know there are things which are very clearly mentioned but i also feel there are some times where in word something is written but the spirit of it talks something else exactly your spirit of it means it differently so i think spirit of the law is important as you've been saying from the beginning and i agree with this all right uh, so the next one is niharika i stay with you a bitch word was used during a meeting and ic was registered uh, during inquiry witnesses brought forth why he came up with the word due to continuous badgering by the lady during the session with the perpetrator he said he would like to apologize if she is ready to take back the case can conciliation option be suggested to the victim as a choice she can make uh, well obviously uh, ic is supposed to inform the complainant about the choice of uh, inquiry or conciliation uh, but saying that 
he said the word bitch as a reaction to the woman's badgering is just it's not an excuse but yes if he realizes that the use of that word was wrong and he's willing to uh, like apologize and the complainant is willing to accept his apology is very important because at the end of the day the law says the right lies with the complainant whether the complainant wants to conciliate the matter or wants ic to take an action after an inquiry so it totally depends on the complainant it's nobody's right to say anything but yes the conciliation has to be offered uh, offer has to be informed as a right of choice all right thank you very much for that one i'm going to wow there are so many questions in the chat box and i'll try and get few of them we already ate at 81 so uh, conciliation can't be offered it has to be indicated by the okay uh, conciliation can't be offered so anupama says conciliation can't be offered it has to be indicated by the complainant is my understanding you're right anupama but you know as i said uh, in the beginning that a lot of people do not know a word conciliation even exists in their policy they have a right or responsibility so it's a good idea to point it out i don't think ic can offer can nudge can push uh can uh, you know a uh, uh, force nothing can be done but uh, i think uh, being an ic member for a really long time i realize when people come they don't even have an idea about it so it's a good idea to show to show them that this is their right they can be uh, there is an option of conciliation so sundar rajan says something like conciliation is a fact finding approach to establish prima facie to establish technicality right icc uh, right or wrong i don't know panel i'm i'm trying to respond on your behalf because i'm also mindful of time icc to mandatorily to offer conciliation option and if any party refused to proceed with the inquiry as per pnj principle of natural justice wow <laughs> i i try to decipher that uh, so what do you think about it uh, panel members anything you think or you think sundar rajan is saying perfect we go on uh, can conciliation be offered only where the respondent admits to his mistake or even otherwise where he refuses to accept his wrong doing so uh, i'd like to uh, weigh in a bit on to it and again uh, i know as ic members you have a little bit of soft corner on ensuring and probably tending towards more on conciliatory route but as a lawyer i would always advise for ic and for management to be little conservative on conciliation as such unless of course the complainant herself comes up and says that okay this is something that i want i want to uh, uh, first proceed with the conciliation route because uh, there is uh, more often than not there will be a prejudice towards the fact that Or if there is an act or, uh, or or something which she feel offended about, there's an act, alleged act of sexual harassment. Why exactly? What do we achieve by conciliation? Because there's not much uh, for the con for the complainant to uh, get out of that, except for clearing certain misunderstandings and all. So yes, uh, you have to be a little conservative from that aspect. But it's not necessarily that conciliation has to be moved forward if and what's the respondent's view. so on it or if he accepts or doesn't accept it's more that if complainant request that i need to sit across and i would want ic to facilitate conciliation and settlement on it and then of course uh, we go through the route of course no respondent will straight away admit that uh, there there's some wrong doing on his part uh, but but yes the idea is to make aware people that there was a inappropriate behavior and they require certain course correction and uh, for both parties to agree the respondent will have to offer something and the complainant will have to accept uh, what respondent offers and if she is satisfied with the course correction which the respondent uh, offers so in that case uh, uh, conciliation becomes a settlement uh, to but yes as i see you need to be a little extra careful that the request for conciliation doesn't amount or allows uh, the respondent to get away with something which uh, otherwise would not have happened if the inquiry would have gone through completely thank you deepak i i just want to uh, try and explain this with an example and you all uh, i mean i always feel an example really helps well so there is a complaint 
against one respondent. It's a party which happened earlier day. Next day, the complainant comes and files a complaint saying that he uh, 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 used some very um, bad words towards my clothing, uh, which was very derogatory in nature. And I want to file a uh, sexual harassment complaint, but he's a great friend of mine. So I really don't want him to be punished. If he apologizes for this and accepts his mistake, I'm good. Let's conciliate this matter and close. When we approach him, this other person, the respondent, he refuses. He says, no, I never made that statement. Now, in this situation, is conciliation an option? Because there is a complaint. The lady clearly says, I want to conciliate. He's a great friend. He said this, which is wrong. And the other person, the respondent is not accepting. He said, I never said that. So can I see now take, take necessary steps to conciliate? Sure. So I think uh, you've taken already the first step towards conciliation and you've approached the respondent and uh, informing him about his behavior. And of course, he's clearly denied it. So don't have much choice and to go further. Probably a little bit more nudging if the complainant so demands that, of course, she wants a second attempt for the complainant to accept uh, his misdemeanor. But if that doesn't happen, then don't have a choice but to proceed through formal inquiry to it in that case. So Pooja Kohli, that's your response. So uh, basically what it is, is that if he accepts it, great. If he doesn't, then we'll have to do a full-fledged investigation, which includes looking up your witnesses and uh, looking up at uh, uh, any evidences if there are. If I, I may, uh, I have yeah. something to add here. Uh, when we talk of conciliation, we always focus on what the complainant uh, would understand when we... Uh, give her an option of conciliation what would she understand of conciliation but we also need to address what a respondent uh, understands out of conciliation because conciliation doesn't necessarily mean that I'm admitting to what you're alleging it basically also means an apology in the form I'm sorry if you misunderstood something I did not mean it that way All so right. Basically, uh, we need to uh, inform and uh, educate the respondent side also that it does not mean that you're admitting to what she's alleging. It means that you're apologizing that if by misunderstandings or miscommunications, it went across wrong, that you did not intend for it to happen and you're apologetic and you'll be more careful right. if she gets uh, offended by it. So yes, that also needs to get through. Awesome. Pooja Kohli, I guess you have got a response from two of our panelist members. Okay. Thank you so much, Niharika. I'm sorry. I'm a little rushing because I want to ensure I want to close it on time and not hold so many people here. So the next one is from Sundarajan. Also, conciliation is also to establish the foundation of complaint as details of true harassment may be missing or misinterpreted as stated by Niharika. Okay, it's a statement. What can be possible outcome of conciliation apart from discussing and clearing the misunderstanding? I think we responded to that, right? Conciliation cannot be offered. Okay, agree, absolutely. In absence of definition and or rules of conciliation under Posh Act, conciliation under Indus Industrial Dispute Act 1947 can be looked at. Okay, uh, that's a great input, thank you. Oh, all right. I'm trying to scroll. Uh, okay. In Bosch, the conciliatory approach is not like the ID Act, wherein it is mandatory and file a report. I don't know, it's too technical for me. And is also a need of adjudication except for individual dispute as per ID Act. Lawyers, please help me. I don't know what it means. <laughs> I think the reference here is to probably the Industrial Disputes Act, and there is, there is of course, conciliation is not something uh, which is new to employment uh, employment law domain as such. So traditionally, uh, workforce-related disputes, and historically, you would see in your movies, uh, workers' union, workers' representative bodies, and there is a conciliatory route whereby employers and employee representatives meet and come to a conciliation, but that's mostly in respect of uh, the employment uh, uh, terms, most likely to wage settlement. But yes, uh, not drawing parallels from that, uh, I think believe conciliation under Posh Act is quite different from what we understand under ID Act or probably under the Arbitration Act. It's more of an alternative to the inquiry process and see that if complainant demands again, 
that there is some kind of, some cancellation she would want to uh, uh, opt for then that's that's the thing that i see may take steps to settle it but otherwise uh, we don't need to go through the intricacies of arbitration or id act they have their own set of complications all right uh, so uh, thank you deepak for clarifying that because then uh, getting into id act would have been <laughs> very complicated for me conciliation was thought of so as to provide for harmony and to re establish workplace relationship as it could affect the productivity of industry conciliation is not as per the id act then will the arbitration conciliation be governing the law as to the procedure is again going back the that's going back the thing that if if for this conciliation you need to go back to arbitration act arbitration act does have a conciliation as a separate uh, subset of again as an alternative to the arbitration proceedings themselves but again thought process is that if there is an informal way to sort out the matter then possibly the parties are free to do that all right i am i think there are still more questions and it is going on uh, so i will i will have to stop here i only see, i see sundar rajan's hand raised so you may want to unmute and uh, ask your question and then we'll close it other questions we'll try to respond it via email if that is fine for all of you sundar uh, you want to say something here oh is it a mistake all right yeah uh, okay could you hear me yes yes could you could you hear me yes yeah. we can hear you uh, i definitely see the uh, uh, mix of law as well as the management and and very clearly the behavioral science as uh, one of the niharika had said it is basically to see it go to a fact finding approach the conciliation so in industrial disputes act if there is to be a litigation failure sub for individual dispute that is amounts to section 2a of termination all other cases if conciliation failure report is there only can go for adjudication either to the tribunal or to the labor court whereas that is not the case as far as the post law is concerned the very purpose of conciliation is to mediate because people do not know the law people do not know the complaint and they don't have specific charges is to i see to train is are trained to find out if there's a fact atlet for harmonious establishment of sundar i am not sure if your voice is coming out very clearly uh, do you want to type it out and send it to us we can't hear you can others yes, no. uh go through the process and if need be we can do that too sundar can you hear me yes i can hear you i'm sorry but we lost i shall i shall uh, i lost you for a minute so i couldn't make out what you're saying can anybody else make out what um, uh, niharika anusha deepak could you all make out i shall make it precise Could you yes. please type your question? Uh, the voice yeah. wasn't if, coming. If, if if you can hear, uh, if you can hear me, I'll repeat it very uh, abr uh, in a very short. Yes, ma'am. If I'm audible, the voice is breaking. Yes, voice is breaking. Oh yeah. you know i know the quality of audio is bad this time no worry sundar what you can do is type out an email to us and send it what we'll also do if if, sure. if you do sure. it today tomorrow when we circulating our uh, video sure. we'll also circulate what you're trying to say so that will be really helpful any input yeah. is welcome and helpful so i would come to the close of the session today thank you very much because conciliation for me has been a little scary or sticky as deepak is started in the beginning he said it has always been a little sticky whether to share it with the complainant whether not to share it with complainant when can you offer conciliation i don't want to use the word offer that's the wrong word but whether to share with the complainant that you can conciliate 
you cannot conciliate or do we have a say about do we as an ic member do we even have a say that you can do it you cannot do it what happens if the respondent doesn't agree to the charges there has there has always been this unknown way unknown stuff in conciliation so been little hesitant today a lot of these got clarified and thank you very much for this eminent panel members here we'll continue this conversation every month on month and keep picking everybody's brains and just sharpen ourselves and thank you very much any closing comment from anybody would be great thank you for thank the you. opportunity i'm sorry say morning no no sorry sorry next year please thank you for the opportunity it was really uh, a, a wonderful experience uh, learning and contributing thank you thank you so much anusha thank you thank you smita for the opportunity lovely hearing from niharika and anusha and everyone lot of comments i could see <laughs> we were not able to respond to that i was not expecting that we will have such a uh, uh, such a long, long discussion about conciliation of course the law and jurisprudence is quite silent nothing as compared to what we discussed and there are a lot of practical aspects we'll have to learn from our experiences is all i can say yeah. uh, and we have to wait and see as to how this progresses and if any of the high courts or supreme courts do have an opportunity to weigh in on to this we'll probably see more as to how courts would think about uh, this as issue thank you thank you so much niharika anything from you Yeah, I just like to thank everyone. It was really nice and uh, very intellectual discussion about conciliation. Very a lot of facets discussed. So it was very intriguing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Niharika. Thank you, Anusha. Thank, thank you, Deepak. We we'll close this uh, conversation and continue discussing offline. I guess. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.